Hi class, I'm Dr. Scott Adamson, and this video is part of a, lo a longer series of videos to help you make sense of the idea of the limit. The limit plays a foundational role in calculus to make sense of other ideas, and so we're just going to take some time here to have you really think about how limits are applied to make sense of function behavior. So for example, in this case, we're going to examine this rational function x squared uh, minus 4, all divided by x minus 2. But what we want to think about is not the output of this function for a specific input value of x. In this case, we want to know the behavior of this function when the input quantity, the x value, is just nearby 2, but not equal to 2. And I want to emphasize that because sometimes students make this mistake. They'll say limit as x approaches 2, and they think, well, I'm just going to replace x with 2. But that's not what this is saying. This is not saying what happens to this function for input values at x equals 2, but what's the behavior of this function for input values nearby x, is, uh, next, x equals 2. So this is why this would be a mistake. If we thought x was equal to 2, 2 squared is 4, 4 minus 4 would be 0. If x was 2, 2 minus 2 would be 0, and this rational function would just produce the um, indeterminate form 0 over 0, which does not help us at all. Instead, we want to examine this function and think, what's happening nearby x equals 2? And to do that, we're going to use technology. So we've been examining this rational function to see what happens to the output quantities as the input quantities near the value of 2, but are not equal to 2. So we're going to look at this both graphically and with the table of values and see if we can better understand what's happening to this function when x is nearby 2. So first of all, let's examine the, the graph. So here's a graph of the function, and later you'll see why it appears to be a linear function. But for now, let's just focus on the behavior of this graph when x is nearby to 2. So if x is nearby to 2 from the left side of 2, this function seems to output values that are nearby to 4. And if x approaches 2 from the right side of 2, this function appears to output values that are nearby to 4. But just to kind of confirm that, let's zoom in on that area and see if we can better understand what's happening. Notice now we see input values of 1.9 or 2.1. And as x is nearby to 2, as in the input values are nearby to 2, again, we see the output values here are nearby to 4. And we could zoom in as close to that as we want and still see that is, x is nearby 1.995, and x is 2.005, we are still seeing output values that are nearby to 4. And to really convince you, we could look at a table of values. Notice in this table, we say uh, we consider input values of 1.9, 1.99, 1.9999, and the output quantities are 3.9, 3.99, 3.9999. So the evidence is pretty strong that as our input quantity gets closer and closer to 2, our output quantity gets closer and closer to 4. And we also see that with values of x that are just slightly bigger than 2. We see that the output quantities are just slightly bigger than 4. So we could conclude, based on this evidence, that as input quantities get closer and closer to 2, the function output quantities get closer and closer to 4. Next, we'll look at this from a more algebraic approach. So we've explored the behavior of this function for input values nearby to 2, but not equal to 2. And we've discovered that this function gets nearer and nearer, it gets closer and closer to output values of 4 for input values of x nearby 2. But let's look at this another way, a more algebraic way, to confirm our approach we would do something like this. We know that this numerator is the difference of two perfect squares. And so we could factor that numerator as x plus 2 times x minus 2. Just as a quick reminder, 
if we were to multiply this out, distribute, we would get x times x, which is the x squared. We would get x times a minus 2, or minus 2x. We would get 2 times x, or plus 2x. So the minus 2x and the plus 2x would make 0. And then we would multiply the positive 2 and the minus 2 to get the minus 4. So x squared minus 4 is equivalent to x plus 2 times x minus 2. And the reason that's helpful is now x minus 2 for any input value, not x equals 2, but nearby 2, x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 is going to produce 1. Any quantity divided by itself is 1. So these two just, we say, cancel out. But what we really mean by that is they're just 1. So now we have the limit as x approaches 2 of x plus 2. And the way I'd like you to think about this is not to allow the input value of x to be equal to 2, but for it to be really nearby to 2. Can you imagine an x value that's really, 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 really close to 2, and then you add 2 to it? The result is going to be a value that's really, 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 really close to 4. And so we say in the context of limits, as x approaches 2, the quantity x plus 2 is going to approach 4. And that confirms the work that we did earlier, that the limit as x approaches 2 for this rational function is indeed 4.